guys. Okay, so if you just walked in, you want to come and sit near the front? Over here. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you for coming. Um, so there's two things that, um, that we wanted to speak about, I suppose, with Africa, so I Africa, Africa or an incredible society, who are looking at um, African generations of Africa, right? Um, and I work for the Swiss Union, the of the Union, and I wanted to, to talk about two students, uh, specifically BME students, about the black attainment gap. Okay? Um, so we thought, why not merge the two? These are two very important topics who somewhat correlate and link to each, to each other. Um, so this is why I'm talking about the black attainment gap. Um, but I have a question for you guys before I even start. Is there a black attainment gap? Is there a BME gap? Is there a gap between um, uh, black students achieving degrees, um, for example, first class, 221, between non black students? Is that, is that a thing? Does that even happen? Yes. Do we have that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. I've heard about it. Yes. You, heard, you heard about it. It's got to be true. Okay. I can confirm to you there is a black attainment gap, okay? Um, and institutions have done a lot of, a lot of research into this. Um, over the last couple of years, you might have seen a um, report on tackling the black attainment gap. Um, it was somehow mentioned in the, the race disparity report, which was a report that just said things that we've been saying for years. Um, but essentially, institutions, which is great for us, has looked at why there is a black attainment gap and what they can do to fix it. Now, some of those reasons might not be genuine, but fixing it is incredibly important, okay? So, why does it even matter, okay? So the black attainment gap, right, means that as a black student, you are three times more likely to get a lower grade than your white counterpart, okay? It also means that 80% of applicants that apply for posts, and this is uh, research in the University of Manchester and Sheffield have done, um, you're more likely to not get the job based on your name, right? Um, you're, not, you're going to be in a position where you're not, you're unprivileged because um, your name is, is, is on your uh, exam timetables, regular exam timetables, your, um, your exams, your courseworks, um, et cetera, et cetera, just your name can mean that you are less, you are less likely to even um, be given a post or be given the first class that you probably deserve. Um, and it doesn't mean that your teachers are racist, it just means that there's an unconscious bias, okay, that needs to be tackled within institutions. So institutions have kind of woke up to this idea of unconscious bias and tackling that, all right? But we have sort of, we somewhat have a duty to ensure this. Um, but there's, there's a massive issue about tokenistic representation. Now, does anyone know what tokenistic representation is? Okay, uh, you know, anyone, anyone, anyone come to me want to answer? Tokenistic representation? No? Tokenistic representation is when you take a diverse group of people, stick them on top, uh, on the website, on faculty, um, funds, on leaflets, and say, look how diverse we are. Um, we've got such a diverse student body. The University of Salford has an incredibly diverse student body, right? Um, and when you look at, say for example, magazines, <coughs> on the website, you'll see a diverse range of students. And, and those are the students, right, that they represent. But the question is, those are the, is the same thing happening within our institutions, for example, the um, vice chancellor executive team, right? So you'll see, when you look at university structures, Right? Is that representation represented all across the board, from the top all the way down to the bottom? Because we know on the bottom it is, we have an incredibly diverse range of, range of students, right? Which is a strength to us, it's a benefit to us. I feel like this isn't really doing much. Is it? Okay. Maybe I can't hear myself. It's a massive benefit to us, right? But institutions take, for example, I should have got a picture of like the most diverse student body, you know, like of your. There's, there's, a, there's a thing called um, like the average um, university, um, what's it called, the, the booklets, right? They're, they're, they all look the same because they have that group, that diverse group of student body where they like pick a student from Africa, pick a student from Asia, pick a student from Europe, put them outside, having a laugh outside 
um, somewhere nice and green, nice and greenery. Green. There we go. Like that's a great picture. Nice and diverse. Perfect, right? That's tokenistic representation, right? Having black faces in high places, tokenistic representation. When those black faces are there in the room. So, for example, I'll give you a very, very, very um, personal example to me. I'm the president of the Students' Union. I'm also a black Muslim woman. I and I have the opportunity to sit on a lot of university boards on a, on, on on very high boards. Actually, I sit a lot with the VSET team. And I'm sorry, do you just say generally? Let me be sitting in the room, right? And I sit in these boards, and often I'm the only black person in the room, right? Um, and when I mention something like the black attainment, yeah, I can I can quite literally sometimes see eyes roll, okay? And it's not because it's not because these people are racist or these people don't agree with what I have to say, but it's there's a, there's an unconscious bias that's we, that we all learn as 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 uh, people that grow up in society, right? We learn certain things, um, and they and they're embedded in us, right? So when you're in a situation, when you're in a room, uh, and you're the only black person in the room, and you're talking about the black attainment gap, it's like, oh, there we go again. There's Zanzan with that black attainment gap issues. Is she? Does she care about anything else? Right? And interestingly enough, having tokenistic, um, tokenistic representation delves so much into um, our experiences as black individuals, right? that I have to question everything I do, everything I say, right? And and I'm, I, I, don't, I don't know if, 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 if um, I've spoken to other, other presidents, but then most presidents are never put in the position, apart from the previous president, who was also a black female woman, are never put in a position where you have to question your intention and your integrity, or you have to question your ability to represent a group of students, okay? I was elected by you, the student population, on one of the biggest mandates software has ever seen, Yet I was the one that was, I, I was actually the only person that's ever been questioned on my ability publicly, right? On my ability to represent you as a student body. And if that doesn't say anything about representation, I don't know what does. So what do we need? We more or less need a radical change, okay? We need to like we need to look at what makes us us, okay? What what makes us a diverse student body, right? Um, and that involves changing the, the, the way education is run, right? So we're talking about education systems. Education systems were set up from a homogenous group of people, okay? When you look back, when education was set up, right, it was set up for rich, white, middle class men. Women had no ability to, to, to even educate themselves back then. It was illegal for women to go to education, right? So you need to look at what education system was were, were set up for. Who were they set up for, right? They were set up for a particular group, right? And because it was set up for a particular, particular group, it was set up so that group could succeed in that field, which is fine, okay? But since then, a lot has changed. As you can see in this room, all right? Education systems haven't changed, but the students within them have, all right? So as a student population, we are right to be able to mold the education system that teaches us, okay? Create our own spaces of learning, all right? Because at the end of the day, there isn't a particular way of learning. There isn't no, no right way of learning. Me stood right here speaking to you isn't the correct way of learning. Me pointing to a slide and saying, yep, yeah, race, ethnicity, BME students, new, yep, yeah, got that, got that right. Come back next week for uh, feedback. Isn't, isn't the right way of learning because you have to dictate your own way of learning. It's your own space. Education system, right, hasn't been set, hasn't been set up for you as BME students because it was never created for us, these spaces were never created for us, right? And when we say, let's tackle the black attainment gap, what we're really saying is, let's change education and the way it's taught. That's what we're really saying. What we're really saying is, it was taught, it was, it was, it was produced for a particular type of people, right? But now, those type of people are not the only people in the education system, but it is the only, it, it is the only reason that they succeed in those systems because it was set up for them, right? The fact that you're not succeeding in those systems, right? The fact that you have to work three times as hard to get a first class, right? As your white counterpart, isn't because you're not good enough. It's because the system that you're operating in was never set up for you, okay? So we have a duty, a moral duty, to more or less change the education system where we're in, okay? And most institutions, and great, great in Salford, um, we're looking at that. We're looking at how we, can edu how we can change education systems, okay? How, how we can adapt the education system to 2017, okay? And looking at the students that are within the, within the institution, looking at the diverse student body that we have, and using the diverse student body that we have, 
and go and learn it from different different practices, learning from different ways. And I can tell you one thing: there is no institution that's ever going to get it right. Okay, because it's a it's a learning curve, it's a work in progress, right? But you need to be able to know that there's an issue with your education system for you to be able to stand up and make a change. Okay, so the reason I really wanted to sort of build this into you is because the union started a campaign in, a, in, in about two weeks, I think I'm launching it, it's called Liberate My Degree, okay? And, and Liberate My Degree is, is a campaign just about looking about, looking at every aspect of your course, right? And if it's still fit for purpose, look at the, the, the books that are recommended to you at the end of a lecture, right? Is there, is there ever a BME person in that, in, that, in, in that list, in that reading list? Ask those questions, okay? When you when when the students that that study um, African studies and it's being taught about the um, the American slave trade, what about what happened in the UK? There's questions that colonial powers completely brush aside, um, especially here within the UK, right? That we just don't discuss. Why are we not discussing British history? Why do every Black History Month we talk about American history, about what Malcolm X did, right? It's because that's all we've been taught, right? We've been taught about the, the, the terrible Americans, this is what we did the African Republic. That's all we get taught about. But the reality is, so much worse happened here, right? We need to learn our own history and take control of our own history. And we also need to take, our, we, we need to take control of our own narrative. So hopefully, I'm hoping you all join me in, 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 in the Liberate My Degree campaign that I'll be launching soon. Um, and I've kind of talked about how we can tackle this, so you know, that thing was fun. But essentially, um, I want you all to make sure that you are conscious about the education that, that you receive, okay? You're all incredibly intelligent individuals to, be, to even be in this room anyways. So, if you have, so you have to sort of question things, think outside the box. <laughs> you're, you're intelligent, you're welcome. Think outside the box, okay? Just because, and for me, this is, this, this is the first thing I remember when I, when I became a vice president of Students Union. I was sat in, um, I was sat um, in my first one when they were, different, they were developing a sort of new curriculum and looking at um, putting employability um, into education systems. And, and it's now called the ICZ, it's been fully developed. But they looked at me and they said, Sometimes you're the student, you represent students. How do you see education systems being run? And I was like, I don't know. Like, you can't ask me that. Because I, because I've been taught a certain way my entire life, right? A lecturer comes in from school. Teacher comes in, sits there, tells everybody, "This is what's happening today. These are the, the this is what we're going to achieve. This is what we're going to do." You come in, you do your work, you're out. That's it. That's all I've ever been taught, right? That's the only education system that I know, personally. So for me, to, for someone to ask me, flip the script on me, and say, "You're a student. You're the person that comes here to learn. How can I teach you?" Many things. Hmm. Let me think about this one. So I came, I came back, right? And I thought, what does excellent teacher look like to me, right? And this, and this, and it was interesting. I came, I came back, and I thought to myself, you know what? I learn better when I'm in smaller groups. That's definitely how I learn better. I also, I also learn better when I'm with, when I'm doing an activity. So, for example, through an activity. So, for example, um, in one of my um, entrepreneur modules, we have to literally develop a business. And we had to run it, and then on week or week, we had to like um, invest money into stocks. And it was like very, it was like a, I was actually feel like running a business. And I learned from that. I was like, when I invest 20% into this, this is what happens, this is how it affects the markets. When it came down to writing an assignment on it, I was able to do that. And I learned, okay, maybe maybe that's how I learn. That's, that's, that's the way I, I understand. And I came back to that meeting, and I was like, you know what? This is what I think works, right? But you need to be able to all do that. So when, when university asks, asks you, because every, every, every one of you have a feedback, you've got you get the opportunity to feed back into your course, you all have an opportunity to change your courses. I don't think none of you realise how, how much the university takes into account. When you put something on a feedback form, you put something like, um, the, le the lecturers are too long, or like, we have too many two-hour classes. We look at that from like one-to-one. -one. They're like, okay, so this student said this, this is what we're going to do. These are my students complain about this. They take that very serious. Feedback, shape your education system, it's yours. You pay 9,000 pounds. Some of you are a lot more, I know. Don't, I'm sorry, I'm trash with students, it doesn't mean. Um, and I know, but take, take control of your education systems, all right? So, I feel like it's, it's turned into a little bit of a rant, but thank you so much for having me. Um, I hopefully will show you, I was gonna show you a video, this is a 20 minute video, 
um, is called, this, this, there's a campaign called Why Is My Curriculum Right? I don't think I'll be able to show it because we're running out of time, but um, if you um, all go on YouTube um, and hashtag Why Is My Curriculum Right? It's an incredible campaign that um, UCL, University of Manchester, so a lot of universities across the country have joined in, in and it's just basically diversifying education systems. So thank you for having me. Samson.